Since the massacre of nine African Americans in June 2015 in Charleston, South Carolina, monuments of the rebellion have come under close scrutiny, and many communities have taken them down, or at least initiated a conversation about their removal. There are over 700 statues and monuments to the rebellion in the United States. Only about 114 statues have come down so far. While there are some Confederate monuments in New Mexico, the state had its own monument takedown controversy that illustrates how much more complicated the War of the Rebellion in the West was and is, and how much more attention we should pay to the events in the western parts of the country. In 1868, a monument committee erected a 30-foot stone cenotaph, an obelisk with a base, to commemorate the efforts of the U.S. veterans in New Mexico. Chairing the committee was John Slaw, the commander of U.S. forces at Glorieta Pass. He did not see the monument completed, as he was murdered in late 1867. A new commission took over after his death, it was this group that demanded that a monument not only commemorates the U.S. veterans of the War of the Rebellion, but also those who fought in the wars against Native Americans. The monument was placed in the main plaza of Santa Fe, across the street from the historical Palace of the Governors. The placement of the monument coincided with a redesign of the plaza. The monument's base consisted of four engraved marble panels. On January 29, 1868, the territorial legislature decided on the wording for the four panels. Here's what each said. The wording on the panels drew significant criticism. Not only did a large number of people in the territory fail basic English, with February and April on the panels being misspelled, at the height of the Confederate monument movement and neo-Confederate revisionism, there was a suggestion in 1909 to replace a rebel with Confederate on the panels. The measure had the support of the territorial legislature and the governor. However, U.S. veteran groups and a former governor opposed the idea with success, demanding the monument be left sacred and unmutilated. In the 1930s, Texans took umbrage with the word rebel and requested the removal of the monument. What an ironic situation, right? There was also a call to remove the monument and replace it with a statue to a Spanish explorer to honor the state's Spanish heritage and Hispanic population. Even more, the force panel, where the word savage is engraved, raised increasingly concerns among the state's Native American population. And on August 8, 1974, the word was removed, 
chiseled out. Who did the chiseling remains a mystery, as the individual was not questioned as he did this in broad daylight. Apparently, he was wearing rather official-looking clothes, and no one thought anything about it. Native people viewed the word choice as a daily reminder of their second-class citizenship. We're very much like African Americans with Confederate monuments in the Southeast. The governor supported the native claim for a change to the monument, but Santa Fe's older families and preservationists opposed the idea of any alteration. Native American activists were not in favor of a compromise plaque added to the monument suggested by the state government. Native American activists actually damaged the panel further in 2002. Ironically, though, that specific panel faces towards the Palace of Governors, where every day local Native American artists sell their arts and crafts. What an insult. To Native American activists, the monument was not just offensive, because of the reference to them as savages, but also because it honored soldiers who had fought to remove native people from their homelands. On October 12, 2020, protesters toppled the top three components of the obelisk using ropes. There were some arrests made immediately prior to the toppling. The city had planned to protect the monument from protests with plywood boards. But they were too late. The monument has come down. What happened in Santa Fe was unusual. There were Confederate monuments toppled by protesters such as in North Carolina. But this was not a Confederate monument. This was a monument to the victors, the U.S. Army. But because the soldiers of the U.S. Army not only defeated rebel invaders, but also engaged in a brutal imperial war against the native population, the monument had a double meaning. Understanding monuments and their meaning is challenging. Just like African Americans look to the white supremacist confederate monuments as reminders of second class citizenship, so do Native Americans view U.S. monuments as monuments celebrating their oppressors. Thank you for watching this episode of the Warps of Rebellion channel. If you like the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the Warps of Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the Warps of Rebellion channel.